The following is an exclusive presentation of Ravens Productions. What's up, Ravens fans? Welcome into a fresh edition of Ravens Unscripted. As always, coming to you from the Under Armour Performance Center. It's week 13 of the season, and the Ravens find themselves right in the playoff mix after two straight wins. A lot to talk about, so let's introduce the panel. We've got Garrett Downing of Ravens Media, high-end, high-priced talent Jarrett Johnson, and Pete Gilbert of WBAL. Kind of Guys, there, right? Yeah, there you go. Right? <laughs> Four downs. Garrett, we always start with you. General takeaways after the win over the Raiders are what? I would say this. I think that this Ravens team is one that is absolutely going to be right in the mix for a playoff spot. I think that we've seen enough over these past couple of weeks that I feel like they're going to be in this thing down the stretch run. And I know that the Bengals and the Raiders aren't necessarily playing their best football right now. But I think that these are two good wins from a team that needed it. And then I think offensively, the big takeaway is that this is a team that needs to run the ball. In the first half of Sunday's game, they kind of went more with the passing attack. I think that they need to stick to that ground and pound approach first and foremost. And I liked really what I saw from this team in the second half. So I think that what we saw from them in the second half of Sunday's game is the recipe for this team moving forward. You were on the call. Would, would you walk away later Sunday night thinking? Well, I mean, number one, it was fun to watch. <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, this offense with Lamar Jackson at the helm, and you could see the, the creativity that the coordinators, Marty Morgan Wig, and particularly Greg Roman, who, in my opinion, is one of the best run coordinators in the league, you could kind of see he's having fun with it because you can do so many different things with a quarterback who's this athletic. Um, and I was also intrigued on, on how well he threw the ball. I thought that he threw the ball way better than he did, obviously, in the preseason and, and then some of the passes we've seen him throw um, early in the, in the year. So it was, it, was, it was fun to watch, and it was, it was good to watch the defense close the game out. How should the opponent, Garrett brought it up, be utilized in the evaluation of these games and Lamar Jackson specifically? I mean, you have to. I mean, the, the, look, these were two of the worst defenses in the NFL. And you know, the Bengals have given up coming into the game five or three straight games and more than 500 yards. The Ravens got 400 yards. So that wasn't quite as good as what they had been doing. And against Oakland, a team that was traveling from the West Coast for a one o'clock game, the fact that Oakland came out you know, right away and kind of punched them in the mouth on an opening touchdown drive, that was a little disconcerting, but the Ravens decided, you could tell, the mindset was whatever we need to do to get a win is what we're going to do. If that means scrapping a game plan, fine. You look at the way they came out in the first half, and they wanted to make sure Lamar wasn't going to run it 27 times. So he, didn't, he only ran it twice. Well, you know what? That wasn't enough. Not for what these, they need to do to get the win. Second half, they opened it up more in terms of the ground game. That first drive with 13 plays, 12 runs. So, and that was into a touchdown. They looked more comfortable, and everyone was happy about it afterwards. So, I think you have to, it, they weren't against, against great teams, but they did what they had to do to get a win. They had those two games in a row where they lose either of them. You're probably out of the playoff race. They got the job done. Jared, let's use that as a jumping off point with Lamar Jackson. If he plays the way he's played in these two games, and let's use the Raiders game more notably because he definitely looked more dim that had more dimension. Is that going to be good enough if he's tasked with playing and starting against Atlanta and down the stretch here? I mean, I think so. If we can generate the runs we've been able to do. And let's not forget that he had a 70-yard touchdown called back. That was an unbelievable pass to John Brown that got called back for a holding call. But I think the way he played yesterday, the way the offense operated, I think is good enough to win, especially if our defense plays the way they did in the second half. The thing that he's brought, obviously, is the ground game is completely different. When Joe was in at quarterback, this offense had no ground game. I mean, it was non-existent. So, all of a sudden, he's been inserted into the starting lineup, and the Ravens have the best ground game in the entire NFL. Now, obviously, a big piece of that is that your quarterback's going to be running for, you know, 80 to 100 yards every single game that Lamar Jackson's in there. So, he just added that element to the offense. All of a sudden, you got Gus Edwards, who was an undrafted free agent previously on the practice squad, runs for back-to-back 100-yard -back games. You're keeping teams, keeping offenses off the field. Like, that's to me is the biggest maybe benefit that kind of goes under the radar with Lamar Jackson. If you're going into Atlanta, you're going into Kansas City, and you want to keep those high-powered offenses off the field, well, the best way to do that is to have a ground game that can go on the road, and that's what Lamar and this offense give you, and I don't think you can understate that. Okay, this is what everybody at home wants to hear is oh, Joe's healthy, if he's healthy this week, and available. Pete, you get first crack at this. 
Do you start Lamar Jackson or do you start Joe Flacco? My initial thought yesterday after the game was you go with Joe. Yeah, and John had already said, John Harbaugh had said that there was going to be a bigger role for Lamar going forward regardless. So he's going to play. But the more I thought about it, what this team does well, and particularly after talking to guys like Marshall Yonda in the locker room, they were so excited to run the ball the way they did. Everyone was getting behind him. Michael Crabtree offered an impassioned defense for Lamar Jackson. This is a wide receiver. He's not getting many targets. They get a touchdown. But, I mean, they, the locker room, I think, is behind this guy. And they were at their best, I think, when they were just letting Lamar run his RPO option. Gus Bus down the middle. I, I, so Joe's not that great. You, you, I'm you on ride Lamar. Lamar in, in, until uh, it falls off the tracks. Jared, where you go? Uh, I, I'm a traditionalist. You know, <laughs> I like the old school quarterback, stand in the pocket, read coverage, deliver an accurate pass. So my my opinion is that they should go back to Joe. He's um, he's the one that has got a Super Bowl victory. Um, he's been in the league a long time. Um, at some point in the season, you're going to have to have a guy that can lead a two-minute drive at the end of the game to win it in the fourth quarter, and I think Joe's the best option. However, it is obvious that, that Lamar deserves and has earned a big role in this offense. Mm -hmm. you know, does that mean you have to go with a two-quarterback system? I don't know. That's why I'm not a paid coach. <laughs> um, but, but he is highly paid as an Highly paid talent. <laughs> but, um, but it was interesting to me watching the offensive line react to some of those yeah. big runs. I mean, you want to see an offensive lineman do a sack dance, what, allow them to run the ball down somebody's throat. Ronnie Stanley several times jumped up and, you know, head buttoned people. Like, so Yonda was you ready to see, kill dudes. Yeah, <laughs> you could just see the energy. When they got a, you know, five and seven step drop and block pass games all week, that's not a way to keep your offensive line happy. Garrett? I'm going to go with Lamar Jackson. And, and this isn't taking anything away from what Joe's done over his 11 years here, but I think the way that this team is built right now, Lamar gives you the best chance to win. I already talked about the running game and what that has created and the way that can keep teams' offenses off the field by being able to run the ball. Also, let's not create kind of an illusion about what the offense was when Joe was out there. The offense started the season great. The first quarter of the season, they played really well. Then defenses adjusted, and they went through a wall. The offense was kind of stuck in the mud a little bit, and Lamar has given them a spark. I mean, that's kind of what we're talking about here in terms of the spark to this team, to the offense, to the offensive line, to the running game, and I think to the defense. So for all those reasons, I think that right now, even though he's a young guy, and Jerry, you said it earlier, Lamar, to me, has thrown the ball better than people kind of have given him credit for. It was a great Absolutely. pass to Mark Andrews. In the, in the previous game, he had that scramble drill where he found John Brown to set up the field goal right before halftime. Like, to me, I've seen enough from him in the passing game that gives you reason to believe that if he had to go and throw the ball more than he has, that this offense is going to be okay, even knowing that the ground game, I think, is going to be kind of the backbone of the foundation of this offense. It's going to be one of the more fascinating decisions that's made here in the last 10 to 15 oh, years. It's going, to be, it's going to be fun to watch. Fourth down, defense played really well once again, and we saw what Matthew Judon was able to do. Jarrett, we saw Suggs in the end zone. It, does this ignite the, the takeaways in the game-changing defense that we once again saw in the early portion of the season? Yeah, you know, in defense, you know, we used to always say sacks come in bunches, turnovers come in bunches. It becomes like a feeding frenzy. And, yeah, they had a lot of turnovers early in the year, hit a lull, but, you know, the way they played in the second half is the way they're going to have to play the rest of the season. We're really going to have to lean on this defense if we're going to be a running football team, especially if we stick with Lamar Jackson. Well, coming up, it's issue or non-issue, but before we head to break, take a look at Michael Crabtree's touchdown in the 360 replay driven by AAA that put the Ravens up 27-17. We'll be back after this. It's third and goal from the eight-yard line. Number eight out of the shotgun. Jackson throwing. Crabtree, touchdown! Welcome back to the Unscripted Couch. Time for issue or non-issue. I'll present some Ravens-related statements, and the guys will simply say if it's an issue or not. Lost in the Lamar Jackson hype and mania, Gus Edwards has been unbelievable as the primary back. Issue or non-issue, though, Pete, I'll start with you, that it's really obviously Alex Collins was hurt or out of the lineup on Sunday, and Buck Allen are kind of limited to, to really not much of a role at all. Well, I think if Lamar Jackson is there, Gus is the absolute best option to go with there because he's a sledgehammer. He is right down the middle. And so you have the defense that has to worry about that first play right there. But then because they're also worried about Lamar, 
the ends can't crash in, so there's more, there are fewer guys you have to block up the middle. He just needs a little crease. Now, he's not going to hit a home run. He's not going to hit rip off a 70-yard run, but 10, 12, a 19-yard run is right there for it, and it wears that team down. That leads to the long drives. That keeps the other offense sitting on the on the. Um, the pine there. So I, hey, if Lamar is the quarterback, Gus is the guy. Now, in a regular offense, I'm not sure he is because he's so one dimensional. And we haven't seen him catch the ball either out of the backfield or really picking up blitz as much either. So, you know, I think if Joe is there, you're probably better off with Buck and Alex. Quickly, guys, issue or non issue? I think it's a non issue, particularly if Lamar Jackson remains the quarterback. Look, I'm, there's no issue to me with the running game. Gus Edwards has run back to back games of over 100 yards, and the fact that Alex Collins wasn't out there and Buck Allen had one carry was completely non, had no effect on the offense. So I'm not worried about that at all. I think it's a non-issue. I think you got your guy. He's out of the spark. He hadn't fumbled, which is the main issue with the other two guys. And that's the reason I believe that they're running so tight and so concerned is because they fumbled early, and Harbaugh is not going to have – he's not going to stand for that. Next up, we've discussed a lot of the layers to what Lamar Jackson brings, and one of those is the fact that the wide receivers aren't going to see as many balls thrown their way. Garrett, issue or non-issue that the numbers are down and these wide receivers are quiet – in terms of the production since Lamar's been the starting quarterback? I think it's a non-issue right now, but I do think they need to get a little bit more involved moving forward. I mean, John Brown had a big play that was taken off the board because of a holding call. Willie Sneed wasn't involved really yesterday at all, but Crabtree got in the end zone. So I don't think it's this big problem. I think that if you go forward, you know, and the receivers still have a very minimal role, it could become an issue. But as it stands right now, I don't think so. I'm going non-issue. You had a big play taken taken off the board. I think we'd be singing a different tune in the media if, if had those 70 yards been on the stat sheet. Um, I think he's going to be throwing to bigger open windows as this running game continues to be productive. And I think you're going to see, I think if, if they stick with this game plan, I think the, the receivers are the ones that are going to benefit from it down the line. Not Maybe not in volume, but in big play, big chunk yards. I think if you're winning, that it's okay. They're they're happy to block. They're happy to be whatever. Are you know, they though? And I think they, so. They did a great job blocking. And they field. did. You watch John Brown, who has really the, on the one year deal, is the guy who maybe would be have the most to lose in terms of he's not getting yeah. opportunities. Right? He's blocking his butt off yeah. for touchdowns. And so if you're winning, they're good with that right now. And I think look, if you're evaluating tape on him, you know, if you're looking to be a free agent or whatever, they'll understand what offense he was in. Yeah. And did he make the oppor- Did he you know, the opportunities that came his way? Did he take advantage? And so far, John really has. Speaking of wide receivers, and this is a guy who you do find a way to throw the ball to, Julio Jones is up next uh, with the Atlanta Falcons. I don't know how you would say non-issue uh, facing him, uh, Pete, uh, on Sunday. He, uh, he leads the NFL in yards. So, I, yeah, that, an that's issue. an issue. Now, the key, though, why he hasn't been talked about again as the best receiver in the NFL, because he hasn't gotten to the end zone as much. He went almost a full calendar year without getting a touchdown. So they found ways in the red zone to prevent him from getting what he wants, and that's led to frustration. There's been a lot of angst in that Atlanta offense because of that. So that's what you need to find a way to do. Continue that trend of keeping him out of the end zone. Then you can get his 150 yards, and you still call it a success. Yeah. Predictions, guys. Uh, I'll usually save this to the end of the show, or at least we did back in the day. But something you think you'll see, Garrett, in this game against the Falcons? I think that you're going to see the Ravens stick with the running game. I mean, that I go back to keeping the offense off the field. This Atlanta Falcons offense, uh, they – So you have Lamar under center, then? I would. I would have Lamar. That would be my prediction is that Lamar remains under center and that they stick with the ground game and they try to keep Atlanta's offense off the field. How about you, Jack? I think one of the intriguing things is how we match up defensively against these three very talented receivers. They got the first round pick in Ridley. How do you match him? Do you put his former teammate, you know, Humphrey, you lock him up and you double Julio? Then you got. Uh, Sanu that leaves him, yeah. that's a big body guy that can get down the field. It's very interesting how we're going to match up with these receivers. And, and, and my prediction is that we're going to lock Humphrey on Ridley and just leave him alone and zone around, um, around um, Julio. How about you, Pete? I think they're going to, because I think they're going to control the clock, I think they're going to go ahead and get the job done. Wow. No how score that, there huh? from Pete Gilbert, but he, <laughs> no he's, calling a, he's calling a W. <laughs> Coming up next, though, it's a rating game, a number next to your opinion. Stay with us here on Undescripted. <laughs> Welcome back to Unscripted. Time for the rating game, a chance for the panel to put a number next to their opinion, usually one through ten. First up, Let's rate Cyrus Jones, the Gilman Products, punt return touchdown 70 yards, guys. One being 
Not that impressive at all. Ten being maybe the best you've ever seen. Wow, all right, we got a nine, nine, and an eight. You've seen Cyrus Jones since he was a high schooler. What impressed you most about what you saw on Sunday? What I loved about that play, I mean, he, he executed beautifully. He went ahead and, you know, tiptoed the line yeah, perfectly. Impressive. But the fact that before the game, he's there on the field talking to kids who were going to be performing at halftime that were high school football players. He was that kid in 2011. He t to, to be, to have that moment on that field yeah. with his family, everyone there in attendance, it was, if he'd maybe made one guy, one more guy miss, I'd have called it a 10. I call it a nine strict purely because it is so hard to run a punt return in today's game without a penalty. Yeah. It seems like every time somebody gets more than five or ten yards in a punt return, there's either a holding or a block in the back. And I was looking for the flag. I kept looking for it, and there wasn't one. So I'm like, boom, great yeah, return. I totally agree. I mean, that was such a cool moment for him. And uh, look, he has really given the Ravens something they need. They needed desperately in that uh, back end, you know, as a punt returner. They needed somebody that could a catch the ball and not cough it up, and they needed somebody to give him a little bit of playmaking ability. And Cyrus has done that. So great story, great moment for yeah, him. Yeah, and you have to imagine he needed it too. I mean, this is a guy yep. who, despite all the success he's had, it's been a, a tough road. Uh, as a former second round pick. Next up, Matthew Judon. Let's rate his, not his sacks necessarily, but his celebration, which I guess is being dubbed uh, the exit as he uh, <laughs> ran off the field after a third down sack. <laughs> I want to start with Jarrett, no matter what, just as a guy. All right, you got it as a nine. Yeah, I would have given him a 10. Had he stayed off the field? No, nope, had he come out the other side of the uh, tunnel. Okay. That would have been awesome. Well, it sounds like he had some trouble with cleats on asphalt, which uh, former athletes would, would know is, is not a good place to be. Yeah, if you weren't a seven stud, you hit concrete. It's like walking on ice. <laughs> How about his performance in general? Well, I mean, the three plays in a row was yeah. spectacular to do that. And the last sack in which he just tossed the right tackle, I mean, just like he was nothing and went and got the quarterback. The reason I, I only gave it a five was that it was second down, and oh, therefore he down, then sorry. missed yeah. third down because yeah. he was back there high five right. with a security guard. <laughs> right. I'm not sure that, I mean, if you were to ask Judon, I think he would say, oh, yeah, I knew it was that. Maybe and it was taking myself out of the game. But I'm still not convinced. I agree with you. I think that he thought it was fourth down, and so he was, you know, making the exit and then realized, uh-oh, it's, it's actually only third down. We've got another play. There's yeah. a lot on their mind. Yeah. <laughs> Last up. Marlon Humphrey's block on the Suggs touchdown return. And the block was on Gabe Jackson. And if you don't visually see it, it's not obvious. He's 140 pounds lighter than Gabe Jackson. Uh, it led to some uh, social media ribbing by teammates for <laughs> Marlon Humphrey and, and what didn't work out. Uh, what do we have here? I guess on effort. Oh, <laughs> so we got a two. Are you saying just a bad business decision? Yeah, there? I mean, it was Marlon like Humphrey? a gnat flying around a cow. You know, it just, you know, it, he got the job done, so I gave him a couple points. Yeah. But, you know, yeah, just two, points two points for effort. Two points for effort. I couldn't disagree more. He gave himself up. The team, the team, the team. It's all we hear, right? And what did he do? He gave himself up where he knew he could go, was going to get crunked. And, and, and that helped. He's gonna get and that helped the touchdown. <laughs> Suggs might have been caught by that big lineman. Yeah, I, I give him no style <laughs> points. I mean, he did not look good doing it. He got <laughs> tossed aside like a rag doll. But in terms of getting the job done, he excelled in that area. So I give him credit for uh, making the effort and then also getting the job done. Well done and well done by his teammates for not letting him live it down. <laughs> well, that'll do it for this episode of Ravens Unscripted. For Garrett, Jarrett, and Pete, guys, thanks for being here. This was a lot of fun. Pro Bowl voting is open, so make sure to head to NFL.com backslash Pro Bowl to send your favorite Ravens to the Pro Bowl. You can also go on social media with the Twitter hashtag, hashtag Pro Bowl vote with your favorite player's name following. We'll see you right back here next week after the game against the Falcons. Have a good one, everybody.